remembering the time that Chucky got lucky. Here's your relook at the NECA Toys Bride of Chucky, Ultimate Chucky and Tiffany. The world's most notorious doll is back on the rampage, but this time he's met his match. His old flame Tiffany, who with marriage in mind, rescues his parts from a police impound and breathes new life into the little guy. But will she still want his homicidal heart? After he cuts her down to size, so begins a hilarious new adventure filled with gruesome splatter, murder, mayhem, and laughs galore. With me just recently wrapping up my review of the reissue Ultimate Chucky, I still felt I had that itch to cover more Chucky figures. Don't worry, I'm going to get that looked at. Even though we don't really have an Ultimate Seed of Chucky set, I'm hoping that will be the case, because I don't think anybody's really asking for a Glenn, but at the very least to be able to finish off the terrible trio. I hope at some point we will be getting ourselves a Glenn. But let's move back to an original set that we looked at several years ago, the Bride of Chucky Ultimate set that's going to come include with both Chucky and his bride, Tiffany. And of course, before we get down to looking at the figures, I'm going to take my trusty tape measure. We're going to measure off just Chucky because he's roughly about the same height as Tiffany. I'm going to stop the tape measure, of course, where I always stop the tape measure at the very top of the figure's head. Ultimate Chucky from the Bride of Chucky film stands 4.5 or about 4.5 inches in height. We'll switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 11.2 centimeters tall. In a way, yes, this does serve as a follow-up to the reissue Ultimate Chucky we looked at not too long ago. So for that reason, it would probably make some sense to bring in that Chucky so you can see the comparisons between him and the one from Bride. The bodies are, yes, the same, although now looking at the reissue Chucky, how much more darker and bolder those colors are, especially in his coveralls and the sleeves of his shirt. Really glad that I didn't manage to pick up that reissue Chucky. If you haven't, by the way, had a chance to check that out, a shameless plug, of course, to this channel, backtrack yourself several videos and you may then be able to find and watch that reissue Chucky. It's definitely worth the pickup if you ever find it. Of course, really a lot of stuff to cover off here. Normally, Ultimate figures would give you tons of accessories and we're sort of now timesing that by two, being the fact that we're getting two figures here in this set. Having a look, though, at the accessories, why don't we start first with this one? One of my personal favorites and happy to see that they included is the Heart of Dumbala. You can see it's got some really nice use of kind of a dark gunmetal silver. And it seems like even the outer edge of it has been bordered in a lighter color silver. It does have the stone in the center of it. And if you flip it around to the back, you can actually see that there's the make, there's the wording on the back of it. Very nice little piece. I also appreciate the fact that they did use a real chain as opposed to just molding a chain. This can fit in either into Chucky's hands or you can, I suppose, also put that over top of his head as well. Again, really like the fact that they included that. Uh, let's start, maybe let's have a look at this next. It comes with a bottle of champagne. I don't know how expensive this champagne would be, but judging by the year of it, year is what, 1963? Is that a good year for champagne? I don't really know. But it's a nice little bottle. The thing that's missing, of course, from the top is the cork. They have already uncorked it. Apparently, if you get a cork lodged inside your wine, your champagne, apparently it's been corked in the sense that it's tainted the wine, the champagne, or anything that's inside. That's a really nice printed bottle. It doesn't look like it's actually been sticker applied either. It looks like it's been printed right onto the actual plastic bottle. So that's a nice little accompanying accessory to come include with the set. Uh, let's see what else we have here. A couple of knives. I'm doing this in real no particular order. Sort of his and hers knives. A much larger butch butcher knife, if you will. And then a much more slender knife. And both of them are actually painted really nicely, especially when we get to the handle. Things like riveted points, where the two halves of the handle are sandwiched around the blade. Really nice touch. This one actually looks what the bottom one looks like it would be better for cutting and slicing bread. You would want something with serrated teeth. You never want to use a smooth blade to cut bread. I'm sorry, I just, I can't do that. I can't sign on for something like that. So you get a couple of knives. His and hers guns, sure, why not? They also come and clue with those as well. A very different shape and painted gun from one to the other. Something smaller for the lady, perhaps. Something larger and more menacing, perhaps for Chucky. 
I even like the fact that they've sculpted on a handle here or added this additional texturing to the handle. That's a really nice touch, the fact that they included that. So again, you've got a couple of pistols that come displayed for the figures. Speaking of his and hers, you also get yourself his and hers shovels. The shovels are different from one another. One's a little bit longer and the smaller of the two has the handle on the end of it. Really nice paint though applied to it. It's not quite silver, or maybe it may have started as silver, but then they've brushed on top of it, almost looking, looking like a bit of brown to give it a nice age and wear and tear to it. The handle itself brushed in such a way that it kind of looks a bit like wood, just a little bit. And then you've got this one, the longer of the two. I actually like this handle, this shovel, just a little bit more. And you can see the way that they've brushed onto it, very deliberate brush strokes. So at least you can see the plastic, that darker color plastic underneath, and even the details like the little screws on the sides to mount the head of the shovel onto the handle. Nice little touches. The hardest part really as I'm going through all these accessories, trying to think for myself because I haven't had these figures on display for a while. They had freed up, I had freed up the space to make room for other things and I ended up putting these ones away. I probably now, especially the fact that we are getting ourselves that Chucky TV series, I'm sort of now more in that Chucky frame of mind. And now, of course, as I'm looking at all these accessories that come include with these figures, the idea now is in my mind, what accessories am I going to display with the figures? I probably have now said accessories like a thousand times. They also come include with an axe. A decent looking axe that if I don't decide to display it with Chucky, I suppose I could probably use it with uh, Ricky Caldwell. Why not? Maybe. I mean, it's a decent looking, decent looking axe. And we can put that to the side. Uh, let's move on to more uncharted territories. They come with a canister, a container, a bit of the business, if you will. And you can see that they've painted the bottom of it rather nicely. I don't know if they could get away with having accessories like this anymore with figures. I'd like to hope they still could. But if they don't, you may want to hold on to this for just in case, of course. Nice lid on the top of it so we don't spill it. Whoa, we don't, don't want to spill that. And of course, to help with that, treading cautiously describing these, you get yourself a turkey baster. Not a squeezable turkey baster, but at least sculpted in such a way that it kind of looks like you could squeeze it. And they're using translucent plastic for the main stem of the, the baster. Put that to the side. Then that pretty much then leaves hands, arms, in the case of Tiffany, and some swappable heads. Let's have a look at those now. If we certainly want to start with the beginnings of Tiffany, then we may want to address this head sculpt first. This is the doll bride that Chucky ends up buying for her, and you can see it's got the veil on the back end of it. A really nicely detailed looking uh, head sculpt. We can go ahead then and swap it out with the existing head sculpt, but there will be some things we may want to change first and foremost. Starting first, when we look at the existing defaulted head sculpt, which of course is Tiffany now after she's decided to dye her hair and sport this leather jacket. In order to get her from this to looking like this, what you will want to do is of course grab onto the figure's torso and just wiggle it off the ball joint. It isn't so much a ball joint as it's a, pe a peg post. You will also want to go ahead and take the arms off. Why are we ripping apart this doll? There's a reason for that. Go ahead and rip the arms on both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and just take the jacket completely off. Just like that. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and find these arms. These are the regular bride doll's arms. We're going to plug those into place on the one side. I know, yes, right now we're missing some hands. We'll be fixing that in a second. And plug the other one in, in place as well. So then you kind of got this. Let's grab a couple of hands. Would make seem so empty if she didn't actually have hands. The hands are admittingly a little harder to get onto the post because they're such small ball joints. As you're probably also seeing me doing this, you'll see that there's some paint that's flaking off of these hands. There we go. There's one hand. Let's hope we spend a little less time doing the other one. Go ahead, go ahead and take the other hand. And just wiggle that onto the ball peg. Again, super tiny little ball pegs. So tiny, in fact, that if you don't get the hands properly on there, you think you may have it, and then, bing! May not make that noise, but the hand may then fall off. Then go ahead and take the actual bride head, and we'll just wiggle that onto the post, making sure it's securely in place. And we've got this, the original bride doll. 
I almost considered the idea of actually trying to track down another one of these sets. It probably would have been a smarter idea to track these down while they were still more readily available, but at least to get a second one of these so I could display Tiffany with uh, looking like the bride doll, and then the other one looking like the regular Tiffany that we all know and love. Except for Chucky. Chucky doesn't really love her that much. So overall, just a really fun idea, the fact that you can't switch, mix and match, change the arms out, that you can revert her back to the bride doll. Now, that being said, of course, you're probably not, if you're only having one of these sets in your collection, not likely to display her like this, but the very idea that NECA Toys included this in the first place is, of course, always a really nice touch. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were watching me dressing up this doll. Let's go ahead, actually, and put the limbs back onto her body. You'll see, again, there's a little bit of white paint. I don't know how many times I've already done this since owning this set, and yet there's paint that still always manages to flake off. Go ahead and put the sleeve in on the one side and do the exact same thing on the other. Now, before we get back to putting on the original head sculpt, which was this one right here, the other thing I wanted to show you guys involving me to pick this one up here is the alternate head sculpt that you can also go with. She seems so much more annoyed in this head sculpt than this one right here. Paint doesn't seem too different, although the eyes a lot more exaggerated on this head sculpt. So again, it's more of personal preference than anything else. The hair seems very similarly painted and also similarly sculpted. Maybe you could say that this hair is waved just a little bit differently, but not too much does change. You know what? Let's go ahead with this head sculpt for the time being. I think Chucky better watch himself. Let's go ahead and put that back onto the post. Just wiggle it down. Wiggle it down. There we go. Sometimes you don't realize how much pressure you actually have to put to putting these heads on the post. Wow, just, just said a whole bunch of peas there. And we got this head sculpt as an alternative. Of course, still looking at Tiffany. There's the face that we already looked at. We just finished exerting ourselves to put back onto the post. She does have her necklace, as you can see right there. And she does also have her little Chucky tattoo. Again, it's a really nice looking figure. Softer goods there when it comes to the leather jacket, of course, being that this is one of the sole exceptions where you're actually having, where you actually can take the arms off. Because normally you'd always have to deal with the fact that the arms are the exact same sleeve as, of course, the jacket. Not this time around, Jack. This time you can actually take the arms off and you can take the jacket off. So that, that is a really nice touch. Now, the lower end of the dress, as you can see, is a material. I'm just going to lift this up slightly just so you can see that they've actually sculpted kind of tights underneath her. She's slightly bow legged as you can see. There's really doesn't seem to be a way around that. But you can see they've sculpted in some some tights, some fishnets perhaps, and as you can see they've also given her some rather clunky looking boots. In a case like this, I certainly don't mind the fact that they do use a material as opposed to using plastic. Plastic would have limited then what you could do with the figure's posability. Let's just get everything straightened up here. Speaking of the figure's posability, on Tiffany at least, her head being on a post allows the head to rotate technically all the way around. The hair will get a little hung up, yes, while you are trying to rotate the head, but you can still pull that off successfully. It moves up, down, and also back and forth. I don't know, Chucky, I think I'd be worried about that head sculpt. As for her arms, though, they hinge out comfortably at about 90 degrees. This one's a little bit more stubborn, but this one I can pull off successfully 90 degrees. Take the arms, you can rotate them all the way around. She has a bend at the elbow, a rotation in that forearm, and in fact, yes, she does rotate the hands all the way around as well. She has a waist swivel. Doesn't seem... Uh, it is a ball joint, actually. Correct, correction, correcting myself there, it is a ball joint. Rotate the torso all the way around. Split on the legs. A little harder to see, mind you. Let's just lift the skirt up here for a second. Decency, of course. Decency. You can see there's the very notable peg. Very visible peg. That allows the legs to move forward and back. And you can also split them out. But just only a little bit. She has a swivel halfway up the thigh. A hinge in the knee. No rotation, it seems, on the lower leg of things. But you can also rotate her feet. She does have a nice ankle pivot there as well. So there fixing up everything so she's nice prim and proper there you have tiffany the only thing i could say though about the figure is unlike chucky i don't know what it is it seems to be the case she has more of a balancing issue getting her to stand properly of course you probably had already seen the fact that she does have peggles on the undersides of her feet so yes you could make use of a naked display stand if you want to have some more stability with chucky's bride
Now let's move over to Chucky. Go ahead and pick up the figure here so you can see him up close and personal. And I know we had already compared him earlier, but we can bring in the original Ultimate Chucky. Not quite the original, because this is the reissue. Though the paint is definitely a lot sharper on the reissue, you can see it's still using the same mold. They have, of course, gone in there and tooled the mold differently. So you can see now there's the, the visible rips and tears on the front of his coveralls and also in the areas of his legs as well, whereas the original Chucky didn't have that. The arms seem to be the exact same, short of a few little additional wounds there on the side of his arm. And spinning around to the back, again, pretty much the same idea, just a few additional changes, some rips and tears there on the back. His coveralls, notably, are also a lot dirtier as well, although it'd be hard to... I probably should have not used this particular Chucky just because the colors are a little bit more brighter than the original one. But at least you can see, yes, it's the same body. Now, Chucky does come with a couple of different swappable heads. This is the one we sort of wanted to start this review with as a personal favorite of mine. But he does also come with a couple of other ones as well. He has this one with the hair more forward, further forward, as you can see right here. Now, I'm not sure if that actually is closer to being seed of Chucky. They're very close to one another. But the hair, as you can see, is a little bit more fuller and full, fuller forward as well. There's the other side that you can see there as well. I think all said and done, my personal favorite might actually be this head sculpt here. It's strange, actually, that I would say it is my favorite. And then ultimately, I ended up just displaying the figure with this head sculpt. I don't know. I guess it's just how I'm feeling at the time. Do I want Chucky laughing or do I want Chucky just sort of enjoying the things that are going on at the moment? The eyes don't seem changed too much. The coloring is also about the same between the two as well as the scarring. It's more just a preference of one facial expression with specifically his mouth versus this one right here. To change out the heads, simply all you're going to do again, just grab onto the body, hold on for dear life, hold on, hold on. And then we're going to go ahead and just replace it with the laughing Chucky head. By the fact that you can see my fingers going red, you can see I do have to apply a fair bit of pressure to it. This particular Chucky, I might even, I may have to even just heat this one because it's been a while since I've actually replaced this head sculpt. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I haven't changed the head. You can certainly avoid having problems like this by submerging this in hot water, or you can also take a, a hair dryer, just soften up the socket. That should fit a lot better. The ball joint is very big. It's about the same size as what we were getting with the Pennywise, Tim Curry Pennywise, very big ball joint. In a way, I would have hoped that they could have used the same posting system that they used for Tiffany instead of using such a big bulbous ball joint. Anyways, you know what? Seeing as this one didn't give us problems before, let's go ahead and put this one back on. Yeah, I'm going to have to heat, I think, the other one up. Just more of preference. Maybe I may, may display with this one. I'm not sure. Now, the figure does have some swappable hands. Um, you'll see right now he's currently got a relaxed hand on the one side with very notably sculpted fingernails. That's a nice touch on Neca's part. The other hand, as you can see, does have a scar, a cut on the actual skin. And this was a, is a gripping hand. And it comes with a couple of other like relaxed hands, a couple of other hands for holding things. I mean, some of these hands really aren't that much different from one another. In fact, these ones are almost identical to one another, so I'm not really sure why they had to include that. So we'll put those to the side. And quickly looking at the details here on, on Chucky, I don't want to spend a rushed time looking at it. I certainly want to spend some time, some decent time looking at the details on this one. I like how there's a little gap of hair right there, so you can actually see the scarring, the open, wounded area of his, of his head. Really nice. According to what we're seeing so far with the trailer for the new Chucky series, it seems to be closer, rooted more around the Child's Play 2 look of Chucky, which I'm fine for. I always like Child's Play 2 as my personal favorite. This one does have, again, a lot more of the staples, the stitches, and all the things that are keeping this good guy together. Always really like this, this eye right here. Maybe one of the other reasons why we're also looking at this set, too, is that we're also still getting that one-to-one -one scale uh, Bride of Chucky, Chucky, and Tiffany, which I'm so super excited for. I never picked up the Tots version, but uh, I definitely would be interested in getting the NECA releases. Quickly looking at his coveralls one last time before we get down to looking at the articulation on the figure. I appreciate the fact that they sculpted the coveralls straight through. 
So what I mean by that is that there is actually the shirt sticking out on the other side. They, they could have easily just kind of doweled in the hole and just painted it so it looked like a rip straight through, but no, they actually ripped it straight through. So you can see a good gash running across the front of his coveralls here. In some places, they don't do that as much, but I do like the fact, I really like the way that that looks on the front of his coveralls. Okay, looking at the articulation on Chucky, his head rotates again all the way around, similar to Tiffany. It moves up, well, a little bit up, down, and you can also, again, rock it back and forth. The arms aren't going to change too much from Tiffany, although the arms on Chucky don't seem to go as high up. Instead of clearing at about a 90 degree, you're actually only getting about a 45 degree angle bend on his arms. And a lot of it probably could be contributed to the fact the way that his, his shoulders are sculpted. You can see that they're a little rounder on the top. Uh, of course, you can rotate the arms all the way around. He has a hinge in the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. And you can rotate the hands all the way around. The thing that he sacrifices a little bit, though, just due to the nature of the way his body is built, is he doesn't have any waist swivel, no upper torso ball joint. If he does have a ball joint, it's hard to access it. Eh, you can see just a little bit of it happening here, but so much of it is held back by the coveralls that you're really not going to be able to get that posability happening there. When it comes to the legs, though, you can split the legs out quite easily, move them forward and back. He has a bend at the lower leg, which also allows the lower leg to rotate just a little bit. And the figure also does have foot articulation with still peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Ankle pivot there happening as well. I'm not really sure how they would address a Seed of Chucky set, to be all honest. It would either involve them just re-releasing the same Tiffany and the same Chucky that we already have in this set and then throwing Glenn in there. I think it would be probably ill fate on their part to throw just a Glenn release on his own. I don't know if anybody's going to be going out of their way to track down just a Glenn. So they probably will have to throw the Chuckster in there and Tiffany to some extent, whether it will involve them changing the molds out a bit on the heads, maybe upgrading their paints just a little bit, or maybe even giving us battle-damaged versions of them somehow. I would definitely like be, be able to see a Seed of Chucky set released, because again, the only Glenn that we've gotten up to this point was the, the family set that we got so long ago. And of course, that's using the older bodies. I would really like to see, though I didn't like the character, them releasing a Glenn at some point to scale in with the rest of these Chucky figures we've gotten so far. One workaround that could, could always do if they ever wanted to release Glenn on his own is to pack him along with an alter ego Glenda. As I was saying that, I realized that was a bad idea. I don't think anybody would go out of their way and say, yes, I have to get the Glenn and Glenda two pack. Ultimately, it may mean if we ever are going to see Glenn get a light of day, he probably will have to be packed as a three pack along with both Chucky and Tiffany. I guess that's the only way. Would anybody be interested in a Glenn and Glenda two pack? Let me know down below in the comment section. In the meantime, though, this is even though an older set, I don't believe the Bride of Chucky has ever gotten a re-release because this is a set that I haven't seen in stores for a very long time, or the equivalent of that, seeing it in social media where people see the Bride of Chucky set because we don't get this kind of stuff in Canada. It, as a result of it, does mean that the Bride of Chucky is a little bit more of an expensive set than the reissue Chucky or the original Ultimate Chucky because, again, he generally gets circulated a lot more. I hope at some point it will mean that we will get ourselves a re-release of this set, or again, re-releasing it as a seed of Chucky. Bad idea, including the Glenda. Just saying. Have you picked up this set? If you have, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it, or just based on this review and this review alone. And actually, as a video question of the day, what is your least favorite Child's Play movie? Some would probably quickly say Child's Play 3, but just... Sit down for a second and just really think about the merits of Seed of Chucky and the fact that there was a character called Glenn and he became Glenda and just that whole unnecessary need to throw in a an offspring. Just a really bad idea. But what is your least favorite Child's Play film? Most definitely leave, leave your comments down below and let me know. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and making sure, yes, that you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis because we may, in fact, be looking at even more Child's Play reviews leading up to, of course, the eventual release of the Chucky TV series. I want to resist from saying Child's Play because it's called Chucky. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.